Good morning, everyone. I'm Tim Rosell. And I'm Russ Speaker. And welcome to the times of your life. Well, we're going to go back 40 years, but we're even going to go back further than that. We have some very special guests that are going to share some stories, uh, some real uh, intimate situations with the most distinguished native of this area, Robert H. Jackson. Let me take a moment and introduce a lovely lady who's going to share some very, very intimate moments with her brother. And, of course, we're speaking of Helen Jackson Adams. Thank you so much for letting us use your wonderful uh, Adobe here and uh, giving us a glimpse back into the history of your family and your famous brother. It's been a pleasure to have you. Well, we've shared a few stories before we put the microphone on, Helen. And I have to say, I've got to go back to what you said. Your brother was 12 years old, Robert Jackson, when you were born. And he watched over you, didn't he? I certainly did. He was appointed my guardian after my father died at 11. Years. I was 11 years of age. And Robert was then my guardian. He, he, he constantly kept in touch with you as his career was moving forward as, as rapidly as it was as he was getting more responsible positions, he, he, he kept you on the phone and he made sure visits were in the, in the offing all the time. All the time. He came to Foosburg and spent his time uh, with me. Uh, Russ, you have a question. I think you were so fascinated with her story. Well, you know, I just, being 11 years old and accepting that responsibility, I presume then you begin to see how his life is, uh, was forming and what was going to develop for him. I presume when he got the, the job and the, and the court, there was really no surprise to you at all, was it? It really wasn't. Well, did, as a small boy, just give us an idea, or, or when you saw your older brother, just what were his interests uh, as he went to school, and he was a very studious student, of, uh, to be valedictorian of the class and to be doing what he was doing. What did he love to do? Well, he was quite a reader. And, of course, my father had a livery barn and horses, and he was fond of horses always. And did he have one personally at any time in his life? When he lived up on uh, Lakewood Road, he had horses up at that barn that he owned. He loved to ride them. Yes, he did, and so did his wife. And we're going to get back to that. Okay. Our guest, Helen Jackson Adams. I wonder if he ever played hooky. I presume he did. I wouldn't... <laughs> Well, that makes that makes him all human, doesn't it? Makes me feel better, Jim. <laughs> uh, just Helen Jackson Adams. You're 90 years old today. That's right. Never expected to have this many years. Have, they've treated you well, haven't they? Helen? Yes, I certainly have. I've got my hearing and my eyesight and my mind. Well, and if I can't, when uh, Robert Jackson graduated from Albany Law School, he came back home to set up a law practice. Uh, can you just give us a little bit of what uh, what he was saying and why he wanted to come back to this area? Well, when he came back from law school, he was not admitted to the bar because he was not 21. He was admitted to the bar in Rochester, and uh, he practiced in a in an office under Frank Mott in Jamestown. Helen, of course, uh, had opportunities to visit her brother when he was an associate justice. You were invited down at times to be in the Supreme Court. I was invited down to the Supreme Court for the memorial service. My husband and I and son Harold went. Can you describe that day to us a little bit? She feels that the emotions are coming back. Do you recall the eulogies at that event for your brother uh, um, of that particular day? Well, he, there was many, but uh, I, of course, don't remember who uh, gave them. Did you two, as brother and sisters, ever have any encounters? No. He was enough older, so he was more like a father, and and uh, we never had any encounters of any kind. Uh, you went, as you said, to visit as often as you could, or he came home to visit often. Uh, he liked coming back to this area. He certainly did like to come back. And uh, he enjoyed things that he could get here that he couldn't get in Washington, like cowslip greens. He waited desperately for them. He certainly did. Did you fix them for him? I certainly did. What was the recipe? <laughs> well, all you have to do is to wash your greens and 
put some meat in with them and cook them until they're done. Ham is very good in with the greens. Close with greens and that. Uh, I thought it was something else. What other favorites uh, did he have, uh, Helen? He loved roast beef and a nice brown gravy. What uh, did he go back to? Uh, did he like to have reunion with his friends when he came back? Did he say, make sure I see my friends if, uh, if they're available? He always had friends and they called them and went up to Jamestown to see them. I gave him a door key and he could come and go just as he wanted to. Uh, after the justice had been up here and was ready to start home, I was packing a lunch for him to have on his way. And so I said, what sort of a sandwich would you like? He said, was there any of them cow soups left? I said, yes. He said, just put some of them between some bread and butter. Uh, when was the last time you saw Robert Jackson uh, a lot? About the week before he died. We had been down there on vacation. And uh, we came home, and he died the very next week. You told me before we started the show that you had a sense he just wasn't feeling well. I could see that he wasn't, because he, uh, he was always up so early in the morning, and uh, he wasn't while we were down there. And I could sense that he wasn't up to par at all. You showed some concern uh, down there. Yes, I did. I didn't want to go farther south, and I didn't... Your husband wanted to take... Uh, some days that you had coming for an extra vacation, he said, let's continue to go further south. And you said to him, no, I don't want to be that far away from my telephone because Robert is not going to be here long. You just felt when you saw him that that was possible, isn't it? What questions did they ask? Well, they really asked more questions about my life <laughs> than they did about the justice. They uh, wanted to know what colors I liked and uh, if growing up I had pets. I tried to answer him, and they also wanted to know who my best friend was. I told them that would be impossible to answer, that I had lots of friends in Bluthburg. Yeah, there were some Peter questions that they Thank you knew for why the, the Jackson the School was named the Jackson School. They did know. Yes, they did. Oh. And there's a nice poetry in the Jackson School of the Justice. Alan, do you remember your first encounter with the telephone? Well, uh, we had a phone when I can first remember. We had a telephone and lots of neighbors and so on came in to use it because they didn't have one. That's when everybody shared those sort of things. Could I, uh, are you still interested, Helen, in the uh, politics of the nation because of your brother? I certainly am. I'm interested in who's going to be our n new justice on the court. There's a vacancy that President Clinton has to fill. You're following that closely, aren't you? Yes, I am. Do you by any chance have a favorite? Do you know of somebody you, you admire and uh, would like to see get the position? No, I really don't. You, you're, you're very curious. That's right, I am, and I hope it's a good man. Well, <laughs> well Helen, women have come on pretty strongly. They certainly have. Did you feel uh, that the movement should have started sooner? I think it should have. There's lots of intelligent women. We're meeting one of them today. We sure are, Jim, absolutely. Fun to share those times and uh, share this day with her. Uh, see them off at all, Helen Jackson? Out? No, I did not. I saw them all at the cemetery. And it was a beautiful day. Just a nice uh, day, sun shining and beautiful. Well, I know you're. we're coming up to the 40th anniversary of the event here in October. The community, of course, is focusing in on the wonderful tribute and the park. I would imagine you're you're going to be very excited when that happens. I certainly am. You'll be there. I hope I'm able. Jim, I think we'd better warn the libraries, because I'm sure this program's going to trigger a lot more research and a lot more reading on the subject. How do you remember him best, if I may ask, in concluding this program? Well, he was a wonderful brother. That's, that wraps it up. <laughs>